<laughs> so, welcome back to another episode of Rage Quit. Uh, today is episode number four, where we are going... <laughs> is it really episode number four? Already, yes. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, we are going to be discussing unpopular video game opinions. Oh, yeah, because I went on a rant last time. Uh, my name is Anthony Schultz, and I am joined by my beautiful wife, Ariel Schultz. What? What? Inception. Yes. At Merhabit. At Merhabit. <laughs> and what are you at? Anthony R. Schultz. Skoolets. Yeah, all the skoolets. All right, and so why are we talking about unpopular opinions? Um, so last episode was our E3, uh, 2019, uh, podcast. So we discussed a lot of those, uh, conferences mm-hmm. and everything that was going on. Uh, we kind of just hit like the major notes and talked about them a little bit. The topic before, however, was posed on Twitter, Twitter and, and it was about, uh, video game soundtracks. Oh yeah. That was our last episode. It was the second episode. Second episode. Yeah. The third episode of E3 though. We just, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> it's and... still more confusing. So many episodes. We had a great Twitter response from our uh, Twitter friends, our social media friends and stuff, who chimed in and commented on it, mm-hmm. and we read through those tweets and we talked about them. Uh, this show's kind of centered on a similar premise. So while we were talking about E3, Ariel <laughs> uh, kind of went on a rant that was an unpopular video game opinion about uh, Nintendo, specifically uh, Zelda and Pokemon. Pokemon. The Pokemon. So we decided to spin that off into an entirely new episode, or the next episode, uh, mm. Unpopular Video Game Opinions. Yep. Uh, we posted that on Twitter as well, and we got amazing feedback as well. Yeah, it went off. Obviously, we're going to talk about our Twitter tweets, and like we kind of did when we went through the music. Art, music. It was music, yeah. Shit. Sorry, I have a cold, so my brain's, like, half-functioning. The hamster fell off the wheel, and the wheel's just like, hands on. <laughs> I did that uh, last night when I was streaming News Gone. <laughs> uh, as people were trickling in and out, I'm like, I'm really sorry I'm so nasally. And there's a couple times I flaked out in the game. Because I was like, I'm on cold medicine. I was like, I'm very <laughs> nasally and stuffed up, so I'm having a hard time focusing at certain points. Like, I do apologize. Yeah, no, that's I feel like, the same way. Uh, yeah, so brain's uh, half-functioning right now, so bear with me. But yeah, so no, I went on a rant because I obviously use an unpopular opinion. I hate the new Pokemon uh, Sun and Moon, and I fucking like, hate the new Zelda game. Yeah. Like, which... with a fiery passion, and then I'm a, I'm a Pokemon pers- uh, woman, and I like my Pokemons, and I'm a, I love Zelda. Exactly. <clears throat> so it just made me very angry with those two types of games and how they went about them. I'm not saying they're not good games. If they were, like, separate premises from Pokemon yeah, and I mean, Zelda. Yeah, they're not like the worst of the worst kind of a thing. No, no, they're not worst games. I just don't like that they're franchised Zelda with Zelda or Pokemon because I don't like open RPG type worlds. I hate yeah. the fact that every time you fucking play Zelda, your weapons break. So if I die in that area and I respawn <laughs> literally that same fucking spot unless I have a save for a previous area, I'm dying over and over and over again because I can't get weapons because I can't kill you because I'm weak. Yeah, exactly. And that is frustrating. I mean, that's more indicative of, like, uh, you know, Far Cry or Assassin's Creed or something along those lines. Something more survival and open world based. And I don't like that. I don't like it. It's like, you know, you don't get the iconic Zelda shield. You may get it, but it's a it can still break. Yeah. That's why I am really excited for Nintendo to be doing uh, Link's Awakening. And hopefully they use that engine and that premise to mm-hmm. maybe do some of the older ones. Well, I'm um, their teaser trailer, you know, everyone, the theories on it. So I'm still hopeful for the new Zelda game. I'm not going to obviously hard press uh this zelda game with that one yeah which is excited that it came out on the new switch and stuff since we bought it for my birthday and stuff but i it does deter me from buying it right off the bat i'm gonna oh, wait until yeah. someone reviews it and see the uh, gameplay uh, i would i wouldn't like believe reviews that's the thing with that i was just gonna say like, gameplay like yeah i'd watch gameplay that makes yeah. sense to see if you'd like it but for whatever reason zelda in particular there's a few franchises like this but zelda no, probably takes the top spot for this it's just everybody has blinders on or most people have blinders on with it where it's like if it's got zelda on it and I'm it's a, a main canon kind of thing i'm buying it and it's a 10 out of 10 and it's like they're, Same with they're the po- not all 10 out Same of 10 with the pokemons it's like that's they're why not. i'm don't have blinders on because i'm no i know you know i'm like, just saying a lot of people do like no I mean, and reviewers included for big media outlets they'll, they'll just fucking here's a 10 out of 10 and it's like <laughs> breath of wild is not a 10 out of 10 no I'll not tell the slightest no they, I can see where they're trying to go with it, but it's a fucking Zelda game. You you don't need open world. It's Zelda. Come on, seriously. Well, the fact that it's an open world game and it's empty. empty. <laughs> there's not a lot going it's on. It's fucking empty. <laughs> if to it was begin with. it was busy and bustling, and there was things to do that made sense, like I I would be a little bit more willing to swallow that spoonful. But 
No, no, it's empty. It's empty. There's not anything there's there. There's no world guidance. Like, if you pick a task, it's go find it in the wild. Or the, with the, give me a fucking hint. Where do I go? And yeah. then I'm going to places that are extremely hard, and I'm dying because I'm a level, like, five. Or let's just say I don't know what levels are. Yeah, five, yeah. and I'm a level 30 area, and I don't fucking know because none of that shit's populated. Yeah. Whereas little map guidance is like it's not a really well done open world and that's what makes me hate it more because it'd be one thing if it was a done well open world Zelda game i can get on the bus with it being for tangential on my brand but anyways <laughs> you know uh get on the bus with it being a good zelda game and being an open world it's a bad zelda game and a bad open world to begin with yeah it just doesn't meet the mark and everybody kind of bought it hook lion sinker because of the time and it had zelda on it and it was a main canon yeah game so hopefully link's awakening uh, kind of, I don't think it'll do better than Breath of the Wild sales wise, unfortunately. But hopefully, it kind of draws it back a little bit to the Zelda actual on the Zelda way. So, I mean, I went on my tangent about Zelda. So, what's your unpopular opinion? Uh, actually, Let's mine is kind of derived from our Twitter. <coughs> I'm trying to, I'm drawing a blank a little bit. I should have written it down. <laughs> Ages and seasons. Obviously, we're gonna go. Over our uh, tweets, uh, whatever, I always say it wrong, uh, what people had said about their own popular opinion about games. Oh, stuff. I recall what it is. Um, my unpopular uh, video game opinion is uh, Fallout, any of the iterations, including 76, better than any of the Elder Scrolls. <laughs> By far. Them fun fighting dudes. Yeah, everyone so, is enamored with Elder Scrolls. And I don't think it's a bad series. I played through all of them. I've Platinum Skyrim. I've done, I did everything in Oblivion as mm-hmm. well. So it's like I got the cred to kind of back it up. Um, do you? <laughs> oh, I do. Oh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do. Um, however, uh, the Fallout uh, world and gameplay and everything that's like added consistently, mm-hmm. better than Elder Scrolls. Like, Why? By far. Uh, Elder Scrolls just seems to be on this track of, you know, really, like, innovating or bringing anything new to mm-hmm. it. So, for example, the difference between, like, Oblivion and Skyrim is really not that much. Yeah. Like, you get several centuries, uh, like, time-wise between the two. Mm-hmm. It's a different area for granted. Uh, but you're bringing back all the same kind of, like, guilds that you can join and go through and quest. Um, same shit, different day. Yeah, it's like, uh, the... The dragons that were included specifically in Skyrim, you might be able to say, is kind of different. But in uh, Oblivion, you had, like, the Oblivion Gates. Mm-hmm. You had to deal with kind of, like, the demon princes and stuff there. Yeah. And those worlds. So I feel like we just traded one kind of supernatural thing for another. But we didn't have both. Mm, okay. Like, I feel like Skyrim, like, if you added dragons and we still the Oblivion Gates and all this other stuff, it's like, oh, shit, we're, we're just kind of layering and layering on. It doesn't do that. It's separated. Fallout, though... You go from uh, Fallout 3, which is a semi-reboot of the series Mm -hmm. uh, with Bethesda, uh, Open World, Washington, D.C., kind of laid the the groundwork, Mm -hmm. um, you know, and it does owe itself to Elder Scrolls a little bit in uh, so far as, like, gameplay Mm -hmm. and design. Uh, New Vegas was handed off to a different studio. Uh, It was more of the same, but it was really focused more on the narrative and the story. Yeah. so it's like they progressed. They moved the bar a little bit. Okay, yeah. let's focus on the story this time and the narrative. Even though Fallout 3 story is great, um, there's more choice-heavy consequences mm-hmm. with New Vegas. Then you get to 4, whether you love it or hate it, uh, you get all the settlements. And building, too. Yeah, you get to build your settlements. You get to uh, found settlements. You get to create these supply lines. And it has all of the Fallout gameplay before Layer, it. yeah, all layer the layers. Layer. It's layering and layering and adding more and more to it. Exactly. Uh, okay. Then you get to uh, 76, the mm-hmm. newest iteration, which I would dogs and hates, but it has a huge, vibrant community. And that game is just evolving and shaping out to be a well, wonderful What's MMO. nice, though, is they're adding, they listen to the critiques and they're adding the NPCs back. They're yeah, cool. I like how they tried it for a year without it to see how it would go. Obviously, they knew. I think they knew that they're going to get backlash for it. I don't know if they knew necessarily that they were going to get backlash for it. They might have for sure, but they. I do have a feeling that the DLC that they announced was going to be free mm-hmm. during E3. Mm-hmm. I bet that was paid DLC before. I bet they were going to charge for it. Oh, I see what you're saying. So instead of... I think for like a sign of good faith. Because they... They, ne- they ne- made it free. They and Zenimax it. and Bethesda mm-hmm. make enough money that they can probably suck that up for a 
like the time oh, being, it just money makes wise. It, it makes it better for people who wanted Fallout 76 to buy Fallout 76 and play Fallout Exactly. 76. So that's entice people, let's grow the user base, um, let's get the people who are already on it continuously hooked and keep mm-hmm. playing it. Yeah. And then, yeah, maybe a couple years down the line, if we're doing like year two, year three content, then we'll start charging for season pass. Because yeah, everything's yeah. already baked in and done now, yeah. kind of a thing. Um, and then you, throwing in Elder Scrolls Online, I feel like it's more the the same. It's it's, it's the same. It's Skyrim and Oblivion. It, yeah. I like Elder Scrolls Online. Don't no, get me wrong. yeah, I do too. Uh, it's just bigger scope of the same stuff. Yeah, there really isn't different. anything new. No, really. it's had like the the building your house kind of aspect. It's had the guild quest aspect. It's had like the main storylines mm-hmm. and factions you can join. Yeah, combat's been relatively the same. The crafting's been the same. Um, but you roll with Fallout, and they just keep adding more and more things. Yeah. And again, if you don't, you might it's hate called, it. It's called unpopular opinion for a fucking reason. Yeah, but <laughs> it they've done a really good job of just continuously pushing that bar, whether you yeah. like it or not, and then they've refined it. So and they, I think Fallout... And they owned a, up to their mistakes. They're not like, oh, we did this on purpose. They're like, huh, yeah. we kind of fucked up. And even though the Elder Scrolls Online presentation was really cool, what they're doing with that DLC and those expansions, it was a typical MMO presentation. Yep. It was like, oh, we left you on a cliffhanger with our last expansion. Uh-huh. Here's this stylized uh-huh. like cutscene or cinematic. You know, leave you on beautiful. another cliffhanger. Uh-huh. Yeah, it'll be rolling on out. By the way, we have you know X amount of millions of concurrent players at the same time. Like our stats are awesome. And then you know some heavy set guy's gonna walk off stage, and it's yeah. like, meh. Like, well, yeah. though, Todd Howard was there, made fun of himself, made fun of what they did, owned up to it, and announced free it DLC, is. and, um... We I want you to play. I'm not a huge Battle Royale fan. I will probably try it out for Fallout 76, though, but they had a Battle Royale to it, even. Like, That's pretty funny. Elder Scrolls didn't. No. Like, they haven't done anything like that. You know, they have the arena, and it's like... True. That's been in all of them, though, so it's yeah. kind of... So, yeah. not pushing the bar, not, not changing, changing anything. anything. So, that's my so, unpopular opinion. Side note, um, FYI, I don't know if the camera is picking this up. But it's right next to the hamsters, hamsters cage. <laughs> so if you it hear. doesn't matter because this is what's. I'm, I'm, s- <laughs> I'm splicing the video with this uh, with separate audio. I know we got quiet to listen though. Yeah, I'm just recording them separately. Okay, so I think we should dive into our Twitter tweets. You yeah, think? so we had a, a lot of uh, great feedback on mm-hmm. uh, the, our Twitter post where we asked what is your unpopular video game opinion so like our video game soundtrack uh episode we are going to give a a shout out and then discuss a little bit on their unpopular opinion about their unpopular opinions okay so there's some good ones there's some good ones so i'm gonna dive in so this is a shout out morrison at shout out to seattle verva bank city 2099 Ocarina of Time is not the best game of all time. So we'll fight about that. Or even Zelda game of all time. It stated uh, Oracles of Age did the time travel mechani- mechanic better. You actually feel and see the implications firsthand. Groundwork is copy paste of what I think ALTTP did before it. ALTTP, I don't remember looking at. AL. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I agree with him. I know you don't. No, no, I'm just. But I have I haven't played through Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask. I missed most of the Zeldas mm-hmm. from then on out. Yeah. However, Oracle of Seasons, Oracle of Ages, and Links of the Past, are my, and I think that's it. No, it, Links Awakening, Links of the Past, Links Awakening, mm-hmm. Oracle of Ages, Oracle of Seasons. Those are my favorite Zelda ones, mm-hmm. and the time travel was like awesome in that and i feel like maybe the n64 ones are hyped up just like a lot of the new ones are but. so it, like i'm gonna just but i would love to hear you guys debate you should see it like we because like, you guys it. are um, big zelda fans i'm not so my opinion mm-hmm. doesn't have a lot of weight here no, but yeah. it would be great to hear you guys go back and forth and mm-hmm. kind of give your guys his points well, that's why on it's a why. Po- unpopular opinion and like i can i can see his points and agree to it to an extent and mine's more nostalgia based than anything for recording i was just itching myself mm-hmm. and uh uh you know it's the fact that it's a little more nostalgic for me but at the same time it is my favorite game and i could probably just go back and like just power that bitch up and play it right now yeah, yeah. i'd have no problem with that and the bitch about the fucking water temple <laughs> and, but you know it's not necessarily my favorite Zelda game per se it just held, holds a lot of weight and nostalgia for me and I'll what's fight. your favorite Zelda game then I it, thought that was your favorite time tracks on the DS oh spirit tracks spirit tracks that's an interesting one too that's mm-hmm. that's an unpopular opinion unto itself <laughs> it is <laughs> that's, that's hilarious like, I can see it I know why it's still my yeah, favorite yeah. game but not necessarily my favorite Zelda game 
Fair enough. It's my favorite game, but not a Zelda game. That's I'll, interesting. I'll, I'll battle that one right there. Yeah, that'd be a cool debate, just because you guys have different opinions on it. <clears throat> okay, to move on, Chimichanga Kenzie at Chimichanga Kenzie. We we're probably butchering a lot of this, but, you know, no, shit it, it Deadpool reference. Mm-hmm. Chimichanga Kenzie. You know, I, I yeah. know, but I'm just saying, right. yeah. Borderlands and Bioshock are boring overall. Oh, man, though they yeah. have good moments. Oh. This is the one I thought a little bit. <laughs> um, so, like, right off the bat, I was like... Yeah, I was like, you, me, and then you, and yeah, then us. <laughs> I was like, them fighting words. Uh, but... I, I wanted it to be an open discussion and talk about it, so I asked uh, why. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Why do you find them uh, boring or repetitive? She didn't talk much about Borderlands, but she had a really good point about Bioshock. Yes, yeah. Um, Bioshock is... If you know all of the the story beats in it... And the lore. And the lore about it ahead of time, and then you go into it like quite a few years later... Uh, the mechanics seem outdated to her, and then yeah. she knew what the story was going into it, so yeah, there was nothing that was a surprise. Now? And I was like, if I had gone in that way, I don't know if I would like it as much, to no, be honest. Yeah. Uh, I really wanted that game when it like came out, and I got it right away when it released on the PlayStation 3, and I loved everything about it, mm-hmm. and that kind of burned that like image of you know nostalgia into me. So yeah. I, I play that one regularly, and I really like the Bioshock mm-hmm. collection. Um, and for granted, the story's not a surprise anymore, but it does make me well, we emotionally, like, it, harken though, yeah. back to when I first played yeah. it. Yeah, and we've gone so. back played Bioshock. We platinum it on 4 when the collection came out. We platinum 2. Yeah, Bioshock is, funnily <laughs> enough, she brought that up, is the only game that I platinum twice. Yeah, and then I, I platinum it on the PS3, too. and then I platinumed it on um, the PS4 as well. And I platinum Bioshock 2. Mm-hmm. Infinite's a bitch on its own, right? It is, and that's my personal favorite. Yeah, I know of the it is. trilogy. But I totally, I get where she was coming from, and I'm glad well, she. Well, I wish you would explain a little bit more about Borderlands. It's just kind of that, just a. Uh, I'll ask her about it. Well, yeah, we, we have, talk fairly we'll, regularly on we'll, Twitter. We'll, but fill, we'll fill it in, um, probably next episode. But I feel like it would probably be similar. True. Okay. Yeah. We played it a lot afterwards. I've noticed like the first Borderlands in particular is a little clunky playing mechanics wise. I enjoy it. But yeah. I am excited for the new one because it looks a little bit more uh, refined and modernized, which makes sense because it's coming out in 2019. Uh, first one's uh, a little dated now. No, yeah, yeah, that makes but sense. I would imagine it's close to the same kind of argument. Kind of like the same thing. Yeah, if she started it late. Not I thought that was a good one, late. though, because no, that, that, that one. struck a chord with me where it was like, they always say, um, what did John Stewart say to Trevor Noah or whatever, or Stephen Colbert, one of the two, mm-hmm. something along the lines of it makes you uncomfortable, go to it. Yep. That tweet made me uncomfortable. I was like, it's Borderlands and Bio? What? <laughs> what? But it was really cool to discuss and see somebody else's opinion, and that's why well, same it's with, like, unpopular Ocarina video games. Ocarina of Time. Fighting words, yo, but okay, yeah. I can respect it. Like I said, as Ocarina of Time. Well, they explained it, and it was awesome. It wasn't just like, you're fucking dumb. This is this, this is a bad dumb, game yeah, or a great yeah. game. And it was like. No, they explained like the mechanics, the time travel, yada, yada. Well, no, yada. there was a conversation. Yeah, not just uh, where it was I like, I don't it. like this because of this, or I really like this because of mm-hmm. this. And it was like, oh, okay. okay. There's personal experience there mm-hmm. and a thought process. And but, that's what makes these episodes so great, in my opinion, is there's a good palavar. Yeah. And, like, group conversation. Well, it's like, like I was saying, it's like Ocarina of Time is my favorite game. It's not my favorite Zelda game. Did, did yeah, that's so weird. Ha, that's interesting. Yeah, make it that's think. a trippy kind of thing. Because you think that it would be, then Spirit Tracks would be your favorite game and Zelda game. Uh, yeah, but it's my second favorite game and favorite but, Zelda game. But how does Ocarina... That's so trippy. Ha, ha, yeah. ha, 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 make you think. Okay, so Nuka Queen at Nuka underscore Queen. I've never played Fortnite. Again, I'm sorry, my nose is running like crud. And I never will, but it always be the game that has the worst clout chaser asshole in general. Uh, she had a lot of feedback on this one, too. There was, mm-hmm. like, people that hearted her tweet or yeah, one of her like responses a quite a bit. Uh, I wholeheartedly agree with her. Mm-hmm. I actually lost, like, a lot of followers about this conversation <laughs> on Twitter. Um, and I don't think either one of us really crossed the line. No, but, it's just general explanation. You guys didn't do anything, like, uh, I don't play Battle Royale games, either. I'm not interested in them. I have some friends who play them, so I will occasionally okay. watch them uh, stream or ask questions. Just so I can be a little more knowledgeable. <laughs> Pardon my nose. Um, however, yeah, the 
that conversation dived into uh, like bro culture or like uh, like almost like toxic oh, masculinity and that's, stuff like that's that. That's the question. We're doing a poll. So it's hard to sidetrack to you. We're doing a poll for our next question because we have two really important questions we want to ask. We'll dive into what they are at the end of the, the thing. Yeah, there, there's, there's a few next. in there. Yeah. But yeah, well, hopefully uh, you guys will pick. Which will be cool because we we know we picked, but you've definitely put your input. It'd be nice to have some them pick and then kind of and, input. and then the input afterwards. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, but yeah, that that will probably be one of the poll options is um, the the toxic masculinity or like kind of the bro culture surrounding battle royale games mm-hmm. like Apex Legends mm-hmm. and Fortnite, Call of Duty. It's not about royale, but yeah, same kind of culture. I agree with that. Um, yeah, no, and how that affects the community and gamers as a whole. Battle royale. You can do deathmatch and kill each other. Deathmatch is not battle royale, though. It's I a don't. very specific I, gameplay type. I don't know. I don't play those types of games. It's like... Um, I play Pokemon and Zelda. I got nothing else for Essentially, you. you have like a group... And Bloodborne, but yeah. And it is like a one-on-one deathmatch, but mm-hmm. you single all the way down to like one person. So, oh. it's like, so it becomes, you know... Now like, how many I like a group effort, but then respond, it eventually yeah. it gets to like 1v1, and then it's you beating somebody else, and then if you win, oh, okay. then you take the whole cake kind of a thing. Okay, okay. It's okay. like an upside down pyramid, is how it would work. Okay. You start with the big base of people, and then you work your way down to the winner. But yeah, that's good. it's an old school uh, game We're not glad mechanic, actually. Mm-hmm. It's been around forever, never really been popularized like it has been lately. And it's I think some weird. other people kind of commented on it. The uh, one person did. fact that it's free to play. That's annoying. It just got everybody on. So, I mean, ground floor, it's free. It's cheap. You don't have to pay $60 for it. You don't have to buy, like, a season pass or anything. I mean, you can buy things for Fortnite and Apex. But if you just want to play kind of mm-hmm. a thing, the vanilla version, you got it. Mm-hmm. Um, we tried playing it. Like, I, like, you played, like, <laughs> five minutes. You're like, ah, no. Of what? Fortnite. Oh, no, I've never even downloaded or played Fortnite. What was the one that we played? I don't know. Because you didn't like it. You played a mushroom dude. A mushroom guy. Fuck, what was that game? I don't know. What's the other one that Fortnite fights with? There's Apex Legends now, and then before it was PUBG. No. But I didn't play either one of those eh, either. Fuck it. No, no, no. I don't know. I haven't played any. Uh, I remember later. Uh, the only one I, I will probably try just because it's Fallout is Fallout seventy six. But um, I like the idea of discussing uh, bro culture, culture, and like uh, toxic uh, people. Mm-hmm. Not even just men. Men and women can both do this. Oh yeah, um, for sure. It's not just a gender specific. Uh, with a particular an series or an style asshole. of game, mm-hmm. and how they kind of like. It's so negative and toxic. Like, toxic is just, the, like, the best word that describes it. It is. It really is. That it kind of ruins it for everybody else who m- might even be remotely interested in, like, playing. Because there's just... It's easy to get in on because it's free. Uh, you get to play the vanilla version without, like, putting any money down. And then that increases the accessibility, you know, 10,000-fold right there. And then there's the competitive nature of mm-hmm. it. And competition isn't bad per se, but it's like that, the, she phrased it perfectly, clout chaser. They yeah. want to be number one mm-hmm. every single time, or they want to be number one on these leaderboards or move their way up regularly on these leaderboards and, you know, whatever region or class that they're in and stuff like Which that. Which I find stupid. I don't know if they were even divided up that way. That's just usually how leaderboards work. Yeah. Um, clout chasers and toxic I think. Yeah. But yeah, that might spin out into its own episode. I'm kind of rambling on a little bit because I completely agree and that's why I don't play them as well. And so that'll be kind of interesting uh, if that's chosen for next episode mm-hmm. to discuss. We shall see. It shall be a fight to the death. <laughs> yeah. And it may circle back around even if it isn't and come up in a later episode. I just wrote that word twice. Anyways. Okay, to continue on, our next one is Dodger Man. So at Dodger Man Games. Shout out to Dodger Man, Minecraft, my co-op streamer. Right. Minecraft is overrated. That was one, too, where I was a little prickly about, but not really. That's because it's nostalgic for you and I, though. Yeah. Um, I didn't play Minecraft for years and years and years. I, yeah. I refused to. I was like, this looks dumb. This looks silly. This is a game for children. Like, just, it was just a very kind of, like, Amps. arrogant, like, passe, like, opinion about... Passe. You know, yeah, this is one I don't use very often, but... Passe. <laughs> it's very passe. And I'm into motion, which is on camera, which would be you great. You did, yep. Um, that uh, John actually played it. Oh, yeah. A ton of it. So, mm-hmm. John's my co-host for FGG, if you've listened to both. And uh, he played it 
it just uh, a ton. Like mm-hmm. he had an old friend from our high school, uh, Casey was his name or is his name. He's not deceased. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, ooh, wait, uh, wait, but the two would mess with one another because they had like a shared Minecraft world. I think oh, they played okay. on the Xbox. And so they would like go into each other's worlds or they would be in a shared world and they would like fuck with each other. Like yeah, they would set like traps. Tra- they, yeah, they would trap themselves in like labyrinths and stuff. <laughs> or like if they spent, you know, weeks working on some project, like a helicarrier in the sky or something from Shield. Uh, the other one will blow it up. Like, just, just, oh my no, God, yeah, that's just, so just horribly. Up. John was the master of this. He did that all the time, too. Oh, yeah. That, I think he that's... stripped him of all his stuff and trapped him in a labyrinth, and then it was like pitch black, too. And so then he, like, yeah, he was always like falling John. into traps. And then yeah. he'd be like, oh, here's your chest full of stuff. And then he'd get attacked by a skeleton or something or a creeper. But, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then, yeah, you and I playing it and just relaxing and like drinking and eating pizza or something and it's building just mind and listening to music. It's mind numbing, is all it is. Yeah. You build shit and watch out for monsters. So that one, I didn't necessarily agree with it, but I also understood exactly where it came from because I resisted playing it for, for years. For so fucking long. For the same thing. And I watched John play it and he would show me things on it. I'm like, this, and even watching it, I was like, this looks dumb. Like, <laughs> I just don't like it. Dumb. Yeah. It just looks so stupid. Uh, but he was absolutely right. It's it's a very addictive and fun game to play. So. It can be. And I can understand why people hate it, though, too. But yeah, I get where Dodger Man's coming from. Yep. So that, that's a good one because uh, Minecraft is so popular. Yeah. Uh, that, that definitely that's... is an unpopular opinion. <laughs> okay, we got, I think, a few more. Actually, quite a few. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> there was a lot on this yeah, one. Yeah, I didn't realize how many were on here. People There's, are coming uh, more and more. Okay, so I have... Ripley's Soul. Yeah, Ripley's underscore soul at Lisa M. Navarro. Uh, I couldn't get into Kingdom Hearts. It bored me. That one I wholeheartedly agree with. I tried to play the first Kingdom Hearts. What the fuck did I say was Kingdom Hearts? No, it wasn't Kingdom Hearts. It was... Two or Fortnite three was Crayola version of Call of Duty. Oh, yeah, that was, like, that's the title of this episode. That's oh, what yeah. it's going to be. Yeah, yeah. Gonna Fortnite spurt. literally is fucking the Crayola version of Call of Duty. Yeah, and that's further down. Somebody else brings up uh, Fortnite again or Battle Royale games. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, Ripley Soul talks about Kingdom Hearts. Uh, I agree. I was a huge Final Fantasy fan, and I was excited about the... I Obviously, there was a lot of, like, internet coverage in the early 2000s <laughs> when this game came out. So you Back didn't look up Disney. stuff. I mean, it existed, but... It wasn't what it is now where you could... Dial up internet webs. Yeah. Mom, get out the phone. I'm trying to look up on the Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I remember going to GameSpot as a kid online, and it, they just had um, like a list that you could scroll, and it was all the games they had ever written anything about. <laughs> and you would just scroll through the list. and to find, I remember finding that, like the original Devil May Cry, so I could read about it. Like, And it was like, you didn't search for it. It was just a little drop-down box, and you just keep scrolling. Until you end, it was alphabetized. So you found something that like you recognized or sounded cool. <laughs> oh man, and that was it. Wow, how old are we? Fuck. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I, that was over twenty years ago. That would have been like late mid nineties. Okay, we're gonna pass that. <laughs> but uh, Kingdom Hearts, I was excited about because I was a Final Fantasy fan. Yeah, exactly. And I thought it was gonna be more Final Fantasy heavy than Disney because even though I was a kid, I don't recall at least in my little world like Disney being. Bigger it's a small world, than Final after Fantasy all. at the time. No. Because it I was like so. all the really classic Disney movies had come out like almost 10 years prior, at least five years prior. With I can't really think of like anything. Aladdin and Lion King yeah, and I can't Little really Mermaid think of and stuff like that in the, the early Merma- 90s, the, late 80s. Like the Mermaid came out in like the early 80s because that's what I was named yeah, after. Yeah, it was like 89 or something like that. But you get to like the year 2000 or 2002 even. I, I don't think Disney Toy was Story that and stuff big. like that maybe. I, don't, that I can't Pixar remember. It's Pixar at the time. So and I don't think Disney had bought Pixar back because they had separated. I, I were off on our timelines, but there wasn't anything big like that. So just to have Goofy and all them. But Final Fantasy was in its heyday because you had Final Fantasy seven was already out, eight was already out, nine was already out, mm-hmm. and so it was coming off the cusp of like the golden age yeah. of the PS one Final Fantasies. Mm-hmm. So I was thinking it was going to be more Final Fantasy heavy, yeah. and then um, when you got it, it was the the gameplay was completely different. It wasn't like the Final Fantasy. Which that's not bad. I, no, and that wouldn't bother me. But then it was Disney. very Disney orientated. Mm-hmm. Like the artwork and the style was that. The now tone. if you were expecting a Disney game, that'd, that'd be, be different. different. I wouldn't yeah. have 
wanted it or got it. You're plopped in this Disney world and you gotta help the Disney characters. Okay, I can do that. Not Final Fantasy. But it was billed as a Final Fantasy Disney hybrid and I thought it would be at least 50-50 if not Final Fantasy heavy because of the time. Yeah, but no, it's literally uh, just... uh, So I couldn't get into it either. I I wholeheartedly agree. I thought that would be something I would like and I tried to play the first one twice. Um, Once, like right after it came out and Mm -hmm. then just a few years later... And I just, I couldn't get into it. So I have not been excited about, you know, like, like Kingdom Hearts 3, everyone is just, like, gushing about. And I'm yeah. like, I could care less. I, I, have, I had no interest in buying it. I didn't watch anything about it. I don't, I honestly just don't really care. Yeah. So that's an unpopular opinion I wholeheartedly agree with. What? That's why it's an unpopular opinion, because there's some shit on here like, fuck that shit. Fuck. <laughs> All right. So we have Jake Howard at JKMSTR101. Fortnite isn't that great of a game, and I hate that everyone has clon- cloned it. I like this aspect of the argument. All the clones. Ah, uh, yeah. Because then some of my responses to, uh, like, Jake's tweet mm-hmm. and the others that commented about Battle Royale games mm-hmm. and uh, Fortnite, I, I was like, which ones do you include? Which ones do you not? Do you just say Fortnite yeah. and Battle Royale games, etc.? Or do you say, like, Fortnite, Apex... PUBG, and it's like, oh my god, it's just mind-numbing. I just don't care that much. They mm-hmm. are shitty games. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think half the time I just said Fortnite and Pub, or and Apex, because that's more relevant mm-hmm. right now. Um, or just Fortnite and Battle Royale mm-hmm. games in particular. But, Pretty much. Yeah, the, the clones of them are really getting out of hand, too. We're getting a lot of them. It's ridiculous. Okay, so we're going to move on since we've like kind of minutes. talked about Fortnite. Yeah, it's going to die hard. Okay, so we have um, Commonwealth Scribe at Alt Scribe 76. Final Fantasy X2 was a really good game, actually. That I agree with, and I've secretly held that belief for years and never told anybody. I so I was I, I was very away. happy that he brought this up. I thought it was awesome. <laughs> or he or she. Uh, I think it was, it was a Fallout like Scribe. Common Scribe, it's just a general. Yeah, so uh, he or she bringing up Final Fantasy X2. Just go they. I agree. Like, the dress sphere mechanic, and I'm a 30-year-old white dude. Awesome. I thought it was fly <laughs> as fuck. Um, the love story continued on. Again, 30-year-old Aww. white dude. Loved it. Thought it was great. I thought I love love stories. And the, oh, no, I'm rom-com king. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Don't yeah, even you go there. there. <laughs> you me some of that shit. And why can't you be romantic then? Yeah. Eh, Cold okay. the exterior. I want to feel on the inside. I got to like light the fires every once in a while so the furnace doesn't burn out. <laughs> oh, whatever logic. <laughs> you know, with your goddamn video games. <laughs> um, no, I had, I had a good story in my opinion. The mechanics I thought were really cool. I thought it was uh, a bold decision to do a sequel like that, but I thought Chaos. it worked and fit. Yeah. However, that is like the black sheep of the PS2 Final mm. Fantasy games. So that's a good one. I, like, I really nice. like that. I mean, I can't touch much base on that. I, yeah. 10 is great. 12 is heralded as Batman. very well done and different as well, more political. Mm-hmm. Um, Go pinch you. Sorry, dogs. 10 2, though, um, I thought is. It's it's like Final Fantasy 8 in the mm-hmm. PS1 era. It's just kind of the black sheep yeah. of that generation, but it is a good game. So okay. That's my opinion, though. I know a lot of people All right. disagree. The whole point of unpopular opinions. Both ways. Or a lot of these that I agree with. Not just bad or good, no, except for the Zelda game. Anyway, so I have Jake Alope. So at J O A Lope, I think that's supposed to be space. So J Lope Gaming is Battlefield has sold out with these last three games, and I'm bet betting that COD Call of Duty will look to steal a large portion of the BF fan base uh, with the next title. Uh, that was a good one. That one just kind of snuck in today, I believe. Uh, before we recorded. 13 hours ago. Yeah, so that would have been, like, early this morning. Mm, okay. Yeah, um, yeah, that one did sneak in there. I it's thought like that... in between the two and one days. That's weird. Anyways. I thought that was a good one as well. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't play a lot of Call of Duty or Battlefield. However, I do watch usually, like, the trailers of it and, you know, keep up on when it's going to come out. Yeah. What it's called. Which Call of Duty studio's doing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Battlefield, I thought, was, like, kind of an underdog before. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've been around forever, but they kind of snuck in, I feel, with Battlefield 1. Yeah. And that was kind of my comment on it. Um, and they 
that one looked really interesting, and eventually I would like to go back and play that story campaign. Uh, however, since then, they seem to kind of be on that bandwagon. Like, yeah. we are Call of Duty's competitor. We are going to do better. We are going to either be more like them or try to Instead innovate. of making it their own, they're just like, ha, ha, ha. And before they were kind of their own, they kind of did their own thing, were under the radar. They were popular enough to kind of keep going, but, but they, they really kind of entered into that conversation mm -hmm. as like, nope, we're the Call of Duty rival. Like, we're going to fucking take them on as popular as Call of Duty is. Yeah. And they have kind of sold out a little bit. A little bit, yeah. Like, they're just kind of on that path that Call of Duty has been on for ages. Yeah, that's so. crazy. Okay, next is Drew Polo 420. Uh, Drew Polo 420. Fighting games are sure it's fun, but they get boring fa fast for me. I agree with that. I kick your ass at fighting games. No, unless I'm the Flash. And fuck you in the Flash, bitch. I'm Scorpion. <laughs> God, get over here. Yeah. Get over here or around the world. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is the only time you can kick my butt. Bubba and I kick your ass. I don't know. The prominent, like, esports, like, fighter players, like, I always have the one character. Or, you always or have, an alt. You always have one. I do. Yeah. All right. So. No, we, I, we but I agree with the, yeah. the fighting game thing. Uh, they kind of get more in for me, too. But I have had friends over the years who are huge fighting game fans. Well, I they, want the Mortal Kombat, but I want it on the Switch, and I'm not buying a new. <laughs> so that's right. Uh, yeah, it kind of proves the point. Yeah, they, they do I get love, more in quick. like, when we're drinking. And the ones I've gotten have been for free or for, like, 10 bucks. Yeah, exactly. It was yeah. like when you and I are drinking or having fun or want a relaxing night and you just want to battle with each other to go fucking play the fucking Mortal yeah. Kombat game and... Beating each other's ass, or then yeah, we always could do fucking or... Doctor Mario was kicking my ass. I fuck you, it's Dr. Mario. Fuck you, Doctor Mario. Oh, but yeah, that's Mario's great. But yeah, so we just play those games, you know, either Injustice or but just Mortal a few Kombat. matches. Never mm -hmm. play online. Never competitive. No, I was like pff, five at most. With like best you said, I've three. I don't think I've ever purchased a full price one. No. So. Okay, and now we have Chad Lewison at the un underscore angry underscore monkey. <laughs> And this photo of the monkey is legit. Breath of the Wild, haha, would have been a decent game as it, it, it as it is an open world sandbox. However, since it had Zelda painted slap <laughs> paint slapped on it, everyone marvels at its perfection, which I said in the beginning. Yep, and that I completely agree with. Like we talked about that before. Like, you know, you know. I, I brought up like the reviews kind of aspect of it. How, like, like he said, reviewers, you know, it's yeah, perfection. Yeah, it's got Zelda slapped on it though, and that's it. And it's like, Zelda eh. wanted, like Mario. It's like, it's got Mario on it. It's perfect. No. Mario's another one. I agree. Yeah. Like. They got a couple big things like Oh, that. there's some good ones. Just like in Zelda, there's some like great ones in there for no, sure. Yeah, for sure. But they're not all tens. No, <laughs> and like all Mario's been a ten. Yeah. Okay. So I have, hmm, funny. B9009B at B9009B Gaming. So boo, basically. Almost all BRMP games have trash hit, reg, and garbage services. Fortnite and Apex included. Yeah, so specifically talking about multiplayer and battle royale games, and we've kind of beaten a like dead more left. Yeah. horse with that. Uh, Beat it! it! It is going to be on our poll, though, to kind of discuss a little bit more but that's about a Fortnite different, battle royale games, toxic type, masculinity. That's, and, yeah, side um, note to it. We're not... We clout beat, chasers, yeah. stuff like that. We beat the horse. Okay, to go on, Nicholas Carey at TJAXOM23. It's probably like a phrase, so I'm not trying to do it. Madden, Madden is not a good game at all. Feels so basic and no life to it. Miss the NFL 2K game with Chris Bowman high, halftime highlights. Yeah, uh, the 2K series in general, sports-wise, I actually had a friend who played through all of those, and he would show and tell me like the comparisons of the two kind of a thing. Uh, visually, watching those games back in the day, way better. Like, 2K <laughs> yeah. games always did better. Uh, it sucks that they kind of went the way of the Dodo, and you just are left with Madden. <laughs> um, I'm not a huge sports game fan yeah. at all. I'll play extreme sports games every once in a while, okay. but yeah. that's about it. Um, but even from my recollection, having friends who you know always scooped up you know the the newest Madden or uh, mm -hmm. NFL 2K, mm -hmm. uh, 2K was always the better one. Yeah. So it's just I think people have forgotten about it, and I think that's what makes it an unpopular opinion now. Yeah. Because now it's just like, oh, it's Madden. But like, you forget. But it's like, nah, you've forgotten. Like, you forgot 2K the, you was... You forgot the original. Yeah, 2K was great. Like, All right. And I think sports games need competition anyways. All right, so we have T and Tantrum at T and Tantrum. Call of Duty hasn't been good since Modern Warfare 2. That I agree with. I played... Uh, and that's it on the list. I platinumed Modern Warfare and Modern Warfare 2, I believe. Mm-hmm. No, just, uh, one of them. 
I platinumed. The only Call of Duty that I got platinum on. What's well, a proof point that you could do it? That I could do it because people made fun of me because I didn't like Call of Duty. Yeah. And it was really big then. Uh, those ones I liked. The story was great. Uh, platinum was satisfying to get, too. Uh, I did play uh, Black Ops World War II. World yeah. War II might have come out before then, though. Uh. I don't know. Big Call of Duty fan's going to have to call me out on that. <laughs> uh, and I played Black Ops 2 as well. I, mm-hmm. I know I played some of the ones afterwards. Uh, it never really captured the same lightning in a bottle with Modern Warfare. Yeah. So I'm curious how this year's Call of Duty is going to be because it's like like a spiritual remake or successor. I'm, uh. I'm kind of unsure on the details of Modern Warfare. <laughs> the deep think clear. The deep think. Yeah. Clear. So that'll be interesting to see if it does capture that that same kind of magic because yeah. uh, now we're in an era where we have call of duty modern warfare mm-hmm. or it was call of duty for modern warfare call of duty modern warfare 2 mm-hmm. call of duty for modern warfare remastered and then we Ooh. have call of duty Just modern, modern warfare. warfare that's all it's called so it's like and gamers who Take follow this name. series are hard school like kind of gamers are going to get that but somebody like diving in like a grandparent buying a call of duty game for they just like, see kid. modern warfare and they're going to buy it for this kid and it's going to be the old version or something yeah something ridiculous like that's going to be tricky just as far as like consumerism or marketing mm-hmm. is um concerned for older generations like parents and grandparents trying to buy a game for their kid yeah who might be into call of duty that's really the only kind of big thing i see from it but i was like just you should just fucking name it something else <laughs> like honestly <coughs> exactly i mean it could be like a play on words or a spinoff of it or something along those lines like it's fine to reboot it or you know whatever you do whatever to do. you need to do for the but game don't give it the same fucking just name. don't give it the same name again because it's like now we're having multiple games with the same name within the same franchise and kind of the same, not years, but released in the same... Yeah, within a decade. Uh, and it's yeah. like... It, it, yeah, it's just a little, like, you know, confusing for Someone non-gamers. Someone didn't think this through, do da, do da. <laughs> Okay, well, I think... That's yeah, that's kind of the wrap-up for that. Um, I really like and appreciate all of the, the reactions we had for unpopular video uh, game opinions. Yeah, and that's why the next time we're doing a poll, so you can pick the question, and then we'll dive in on that question. Yeah, and unfortunately, uh, this poll, if you're listening to this, you will not see. No, yeah. Uh, we will try to do the same thing for uh, coming weeks, though. Yeah, we'll try so to you keep can it kinda stick. stick with it, yeah. yeah. Uh, so you can follow Ariel at Mer Hobbit, uh-huh. or you can follow myself at Anthony R. Schultz. Help me, uh, I need more followers. I primarily post uh, the polls uh, or questions yeah, I'm not for, the face. for Rage Quit. Um, so hit up my Twitter if you're looking for a poll or you want to chime in about uh, the next Read Quit podcast. Or if you want to be bored, just follow mine. <laughs> Whatever works for <laughs> Whatever you. Whatever works for you. <laughs> All right. But we have a lot of good kind of conversations about video games in the hall. Mm-hmm. and um, I think you wrote the questions down in your journal if you want to. One of them. I wrote one them. of them. So we can kind of go off of it. So we're going to know what the questions are. Yeah, but this will already be done and recorded by the time they hear. So there's no point. to. Do okay, it. fair so enough. That's my point. Um, (laughs) if we were two weeks ahead it would work but we're only a week ahead so yeah we're getting there but anyways we'll try to keep consistent with the polls and our questions on my twitter so if you like what you've heard during this episode like what you see (laughs) yeah it's the first episode we didn't mean to make that learn (laughs) but if you've uh kind of followed along uh with us from the beginning we really appreciate it that's horrible yeah and uh, you can hit up uh, my Twitter to hopefully see the next Rage Quit question mm-hmm. or poll indicating as such. Uh, other than that, you can hit us up on CastBox mm-hmm. where we host uh, this podcast. Yep. Uh, and you can also follow us on our YouTube page, which is at AS Inquisitor. If yep. You just search for it. And if you have any questions or concerns or comments, we are pretty quick on our response. So you can either message Anthony or me, or if you can't get a hold of Anthony because he's asleep. <laughs> you know, I'm about I stay awake. up late. Things happen. I'm awake the other half of the day, so, you know. These things happen. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, we also post uh, this podcast, and if you found it there, you obviously know that. Mm-hmm. As well as uh, FTG and all of our other podcasts on YouTube as well. They are just a uh, week delayed or an episode delayed. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you will be a little bit behind. So I'd recommend going to CastBox if you kind of want to be up on um, the current podcast, yeah. on the current episode of Rage Quit or FGG. Yep. 
and then finally, you can follow myself on Twitch, uh, AS Inquisitor as well. Mm-hmm. So twitch.tv slash AS Inquisitor. Oh, yeah. Um, channel's growing every single day. Um, I'm a variety streamer. Uh, Ariel and myself do uh, Fear Wednesdays. <laughs> Aka okay, Fear Fridays. Yeah, which uh, those episodes post on YouTube on Fridays, uh, hence the mm-hmm. name. Uh, and then, like I said, I'm a variety streamer, so we get a little bit of everything in there. Yeah, D- day is gone. You and I play together, or you play by yourself, or we do Fear Friday. And yeah. We play and I scream and make you scream, you know. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, I do yeah. A, like a weekly uh, Borderlands co-op stream with uh, Dodger Man Games, who mm-hmm. commented on this episode. Uh, also, uh, I'm doing a full series on Days Gone right now in survival mode. Yep. And then... Bitches better be surviving. I'll be surviving. <laughs> and I think that's about it for Twitch. Everything else is kind of slowly kind of trickling out. Yeah, we're getting there. But yeah. that's it. That's a wrap. That is the conclusion to episode four of oh, Rage Quit. Right. <laughs> That's crazy. We'll try to do something special if we hit 25. Yeah, that'd be cool. When we hit 25, I should say. Uh, maybe we'll do like a live podcast or something along those, oh, those yeah. lines. Yeah, yeah. that'd uh, be fun. Castbox. Uh, Does host opportunities. To do yeah, that. they have. They, you can uh, have like a live podcast. So we might do that and stream it to Twitter. That'd be cool. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's everything. Well, again, my name's Ariel Schultz. My name's Anthony Schultz. And thanks for listening to Rage Quit. We'll rage out next time. Have a good evening. Peace. Bye.